Hey there, folks, and welcome back. In our last lesson, we introduced the definition of a line integral of a vector field. And now it's time to put our new definition to use to solve some example problems. First, I'd like to find the work done by a force field, f of x, y equals x minus y, x, in moving a particle from the point 1, 0 to the point minus 1, 0. We're actually going to compute this work along two different paths. Firstly, the particle is going to travel along the upper half of the unit circle. Then it's going to travel along a straight line segment. Before we jump into the calculations, I want you to think for yourself. Do you think the work will be the same if we take different paths from point A to point B? Or do you think it'll be different? From our last lesson, we know that the total work done by our force field in moving our particle along a curve C is given by the integral along C of f dot dr. This is our line integral of the vector field f. To compute this thing, we're going to need to know a few pieces of information. Firstly, we're going to need to know f. Well, f is our force field. It was given to us in the question. f of x, y equals x minus y, x. We're going to need to know the curve c. Well, in this case, we're told that we're moving along the upper half of the unit circle. And we're also going to need to know r. Remember, r of t is the parametric equation that traces out the curve c. So in this case, since we're dealing with the unit circle, I think we could use r of t equals cos t sine t. Of course, since we're only going along the top half of this circle, we should restrict t from 0 to pi. OK, I think we have everything we need. To compute this line integral, and therefore find the total work done by our force field, we're going to use this formula here. We integrate from a to b, so in this case from 0 to pi, of f of r of t. So I'm going to take my function f, and I'm going to replace x and y with cos t and sine t, respectively. That gives me cos t minus sine t cos t. And I have to take the dot product of this with the derivative of r of t. Okay, So maybe I'll write up here, the derivative of r of t is going to be the vector function minus sine t cos t. And so I'm going to take the dot product with this vector here. We have minus sine t cos t dt. OK, to evaluate this integral, we should start by expanding this dot product. We get the integral from 0 to pi. We multiply our first entries to get minus sine t cos t plus sine squared t. And then we multiply our second entries. We add cos squared t dt. Ah, it looks like we have a sine squared plus a cos squared, so we can replace that with 1. This gives us the integral from 0 to pi of 1 minus sine t cos t dt. And from here, an easy substitution shows that this term goes away. It's going to evaluate to 0. This leaves us with a final answer of pi. So there you go. That wasn't so bad, was it? Let's try this again using the straight line segment. All right, let's try this again, but this time our particle is going to follow this straight line path. So this is our curve C, and we're going to need a new parametrization. Since we're parametrizing a straight line, we can use that little trick that I showed you. We can parametrize it as r of t equals t times the terminal point, in this case, minus 1, 0, plus 1 minus t times the initial point, in this case, 1, 0. If you simplify this, you should find that x is 1 minus 2t and y is 0. When you use this little parametrization trick for a straight line segment, t is always between 0 and 1. OK, we're almost ready to compute our work. We still, though, need this derivative, r prime of t. In this case, r prime of t is quite simple. It's just minus 2, 0. All right, let's compute our work by evaluating this integral. Our work is the integral from 0 to 1 of f of r of t. So that gives me 1 minus 2t minus 0, 1 minus 2t. And then I take the dot product with my derivative, the dot product of minus 2, 0, dt. If I expand the dot product, I get the integral from 0 to 1 of 4t minus 2, dt. And now an antiderivative is 2t squared minus 2t. When we evaluate from 0 to 1, you'll find that everything cancels out, and we're left with a final answer of 0. 0? Zero, 0 work? Did we make a mistake? No, we didn't. 
You see, the force field does both positive and negative work to our particle as it moves along this path. It's both helping it and hindering it. To see this, note that along this path, y is zero. So my force field is simply xx. That means that on this part, the positive x-axis, I'm going to see force vectors that look like 1 half, 1 half, or 1 third, 1 third. They're sort of pointing me this way. They're hindering the particle's movement as it travels along the path. But on this part of the x-axis, my force vectors look like minus a third, minus a third, and minus a half, minus a half. They're pointing this way. So the negative work done on this part of the path is canceling the positive work done on this part of the path. We get a total work of zero. Something else to note here is that we got different answers in parts A and B. Even though our starting and ending points were the same, the force field did different work along different paths. And maybe this makes sense. The forces are different at every point, so we should expect that the total work will depend on the path we choose. It turns out we can calculate line integrals in R3 in much the same way we calculate line integrals in R2. So I have one last example to wrap up this video. Here we're looking for the line integral along C of f dot dr, where f is this vector field, f of x, y, z equals z, y squared x, and c is the curve parametrized by this vector function r of t. So the parametrization here is already done. To compute our line integral, we're going to use the exact same formula on the last slide. The integral along c of f dot dr is the integral from a to b of f of r of t dot r prime t dt. Okay, looks like we're going to need the derivative of r of t again, and you can see here that my derivative should be 1 e to the t 2t, and now we just plug things in. We get the integral from 0 to 2 of f of r of t, so my z term is going to become t squared, my y squared term is going to become e to the 2t, and my x term is going to become t plus 1. I take the dot product with my derivative vector, 1 e to the t, 2t, dt. If you expand this dot product and simplify everything, you should be left with the integral from 0 to 2 of 3t squared plus e to the 3t plus 2t, dt. A nice single variable integral. An antiderivative is given by t cubed plus e to the 3t over 3 plus t squared, and we evaluate from 0 to 2. I'll let you verify that by plugging in these bounds and simplifying your expression, you should be left with e to the 6 plus 35, all divided by 3.